President. I rise tonight to respond to the comments that were made in here earlier. And I have to say, I'm disappointed that my honorable colleague, Jim Chan, had to leave on urgent parliamentary business, because I was hoping he would hear my comments, and I still hope that he does see them at some point. The claims he made were outrageous, preposterous. This is something that has gone through the courts, and the things that he suggested are just ridiculous that he's raising them now. It makes no sense. It represents the sort of archaic thinking that he must believe in. Uh, we're going, this is not a war. This is a discussion. This is a chance to actually look at the material and to talk about it and to bring everyone in on the discussion. This is an opportunity to look forward into our future, not to look in the past. Just outrageous that he would suggest that somebody would would, would, would do something like that. You know, the, the, the idea of going to court and putting your life and your finances and your family is out, it's just, you know, it, it's too much. You, you just couldn't do that in the way that he was suggesting, and I find it just preposterous. I can't believe that he can get away with saying such things. He also does a disservice to the department by taking their confidential document, tabling it in here, making it public, and and reading into it words that aren't there. It was a document that was clearly written for a court case. It was clearly written to just state fact by fact, and with his innuendo suggesting there was more to it, it was unfortunate, wrong, highly distasteful. I, I, can't, I can't understand how someone can get away with that, but I, I'm learning. Now, what I wonder is why? Why did he stand up and say that now? We we're talking about an incident that happened seven, eight, nine years ago. It suggests that maybe there's some fear, something that, that someone is going to lose something. And, and to fight now with those words, to try to get us all emotional about an issue that is science. It's, it's, it's not an emotional issue, it's about facts. We're trying to work out what is right and what is wrong and go forward with it. So I just, you know, it just doesn't appeal to me to have this emotional stuff brought in here, making us all doubt, making us wonder. You know, it's wrong. I, I just don't like it. And I don't see why we continue with that. And he was wondering about this inquiry, and what's the reason for the inquiry? It's, it has nothing to do with the previous case. It's about moving forward. It's about trying to find what we should do, what we can do, how we can protect those people that are out there that feel that they may be hurt by this. It's about moving forward and looking at the facts and reviewing that and seeing where we go with it. And the problem is that one thing that that previous case did raise for us is that our court system is not set up to deal with this. It was a big waste of plenty of resources. It went on for a long time and it didn't resolve anything. And in fact, in the inquiry, the submissions that they've got, some of the submissions are coming back, which are now all publicly available, uh, with legal information on that. And I just want to read a part of one of those, um, because I think it, it makes sense, and it does give us more reason as to why this inquiry is happening. And this is written by uh, a senior lecturer at Curtin Law School and another from UWA Law School. So you would think they're, they're pretty uh, knowledgeable about what they're talking about. In the absence of legislative change, farmers who have suffered economic loss caused by contamination of GM material will not be able to obtain compensation by bringing civil litigation. The law of torts is unlikely to provide affected farmers with a remedy. If the Parliament of Western Australia desired to provide a means for affected farmers to obtain compensation in the courts, it could consider introducing, one, a statutory concept of genetic damage into the civil liberty Civil Liability Act 2002, WA, or two, a statutory tort tailored to provide compensation for affected farmers. Alternatively, it might consider the establishment of some kind of no-fault compensation scheme analogous to that funded by car registrations in order to compensate victims of motor vehicle accidents. These are matters which deserve further detailed consideration by legal researchers. Ideally, they would be the subject of an inquiry by the Law Reform Commission of Western Australia. So this is what we need to look at. We need to find the facts. We need to work out how we can manage this so that one farmer is not financially hurt 
by the actions of his neighbor. And the farmers do not want to go to court with their neighbors. They live beside them. They live in the same communities. They share the, share the same community resources and the same family and friends and churches and schools. They don't want to take their neighbor to court. So this is what I'm hoping the inquiry may resolve, that we may look into these issues and use facts and not emotions, keep it rational and find out the best response possible. And I'll just leave you with a quote. It's a four-line quote, but I'll, I'll leave it to my colleague, the Honorable Jim Chown, to remember the last line. It begins, first they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you. And I'll just leave it there.